So, how you make scorpion soup is this way. You add some oil to a pan, you take about 30 or 40 scorpions and you throw them in there and you saute them for about a minute or so, or two minutes, then you add some crushed garlic and add that, some salt and pepper and then a, a broth of some sort, maybe some whiskey to kill you know, the, the pain of eating it. Uh, but there's a, actually, there's a recipe for that. I said, there's got to be, you know, scorpions. In, in other cultures, they eat all kinds of stuff. In the culture of Minnesota, we had chocolate-covered ants, right? I would heard that. I never had it. But at least we have enough sense to put chocolate on it. I think I would add peanut butter, too, to that, just to make sure. Uh, but in this sense, you know, they've got scorpions and snakes. And, of course, snake tastes like... Chicken, yeah, right. So either chicken or fish, I guess. Uh, but in this culture, snakes and scorpions are not the kind of food you want to introduce to your meal. It's not clean. They have dietary laws, and that ain't part of it. And so Jesus is making a hyperbole, just extreme. As for fish, you wouldn't give them a you know, snake or an egg, a scorpion, of course. But if you're in China, you'd eat all kinds of good stuff, wouldn't you? And then in seminary, they said, you know, when you're a missionary, be careful. You've got to establish your boundaries. If you just go right in and become native right away, they're going to haul you out feet first because you can't handle what their diet is and what their culture is all at one time. Maybe over years you can adapt, but you have to be careful with that. So Jesus is, is walking on his way to Jerusalem. We know that. From Luke 9 to 19, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for the big day, right? The death and resurrection. He's going to Jerusalem with his disciples. And of course, on the way, they said, well, John, is it a special prayer for his disciples? Do we get one too? And so Jesus says, I'll give you one. <laughs> Listen to this one. You know, God, um, 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 what else was there? There was something else in there. Uh, uh, um, your kingdom that I've been introducing to you, the kingdom, our daily bread, meaning whatever you need, not just food. Uh, forgiving our sins, and we forgive others. You know, the reconciliation thing, remember that. And the time of trial, save us from the time of trial. And you notice, of course, that it's all in plural. Our Father, save us. You know, uh, forgive us our sins as we forgive others. Um, all those kinds of things. So Jesus is keeping it real. He's keeping it a part of a community, saying it's not all about you, it's all about us. And so when you ask for things, make sure it's not always about you, but make sure it's all about what's going on in the world and the community. And I have a sense that, you know, like everybody else, the disciples have grown uh, immensely. Being with Jesus, he, they've seen and done things they never thought possible. Healings, uh, casting out demons, uh, inviting the lepers, talking to women, inviting what have you, all kinds of things. And imagine they have changed over the years. I mean, I have. I remember Christmas asking for all those cool toys, you know, the action figures and, and the walkie-talkies and all those kinds of things. And on Christmas Day, you know, you're, you're five years old, you open up gifts and, what is this? A turtleneck? No, oh, I don't want that turtleneck, you know. And then you get another pair of pants or corduroys. Like, I don't want corduroys. Get rid of that. But now that I'm older, it's like, oh, cool, turtleneck. Huh corduroys, you know, because I can't shop for myself because I can't tell what matches with what. So if you get it as a gift, this is great. No, it's changed. So Jesus is he's making sure that they uh, understand that not only are they going to ask, but he will listen. They may not get what they want. They may not get in the time that they want it. They may be no a lot of different things, but at least Continue to ask. Continue this sense of prayer because for Jesus, that is the key for a lot of things. You remember when the G disciples went out healing and, and they couldn't heal this one person and, and Jesus said, you faithless generation, they can only be healed by prayer. Wow, that's key. I think for Jesus is teaching his disciples that if you want to get close to God, you've got to communicate. Like any of our relationships, you've got to have that communication open. You've got to start being more vulnerable in your, in your communication, too. You've got to tell it what's in your heart. Uh, and there's a current movie, well, it was current, Bruce Almighty with 
uh, Morgan Freeman playing God and, and um, Jim Carrey playing Bruce. And uh, Jim Carrey is, I could be God, so he gives him God's power for a, for a couple of days or a week. Um, his life just <laughs> turns into chaos. He doesn't do it well. At the end, Jim Carrey comes to Morgan Freeman, and Morgan Freeman says, tell me what you want, what you, what you really want. And Jim Carrey says, um, uh, world peace, um, feed the hungry, uh, and on and on. And, and Morgan Freeman said, well, those are good things. Tell me what you really want. What's in your heart of hearts? What do you desire most? And he said, I want my ex-girlfriend to find someone who will love her in a way she deserves, the way that I could never do that. And he would say, that's a prayer. I think Jesus is, is telling his disciples, that's a prayer. You find your deepest uh, need, desire, hope um, for yourself, for others. And that's what we're looking for. Because God gives good gifts to all who ask, sometimes unexpectedly, sometimes uh, in a nice way, but at least that's a connecting point. And when we pray as a congregation together, that's a connecting point for all of us together as a community of faith, to pray for others, to pray for the needs that we have, just the communication for, for uh, well, communication for all of vulnerability and our connection with God. You'll notice also in the prayer it talks about daily needs. Jesus doesn't forget. Jesus is a realist. He's been to this place. He's been with his disciples. He knows that they have daily needs and it's every day it's, it's like you can't uh, practice 10 hours a day and expect to be great. You have to practice maybe an hour each day continually for a long time. I can't lift weights for like 12 hours a day and expect to be huge the next day. It's got to be continual day after day after day. Jesus is saying this journey is, is a, it's a continual, continual process daily. I want you to pray daily for what you need, not just all at once and, and be done with it for another three years or whatever. Keep asking, and I will keep providing. And keep your eyes open for how I provide and what I provide and, and where the Spirit's moving in you. And God said, and Jesus said, and I will give the Holy Spirit to you in, in immense measure, more than you can ever handle, more than you can ever imagine, because that's what God is. And that's what Jesus was there to teach his disciples, to teach us, that that's what God is. Amen.